Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're gonna move into a commune. Uh, we both have our laptops out. I mean, yeah. you know things are about to get serious when there's research happening. We've got a big decision to make because we just have to decide which commune we're gonna move into. There's lots of them spread across you this, want a pinky this square, grand globe. You want a pinky square right now? Yep. That we are, we are going to join a, join a commune, commune by the end, the end of this, this thing. Th- 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 podcast Here's episode. the thing, we don't believe that pinky squares are binding. That's the sort of the catch 22. Don't get your hopes up. Um, but I am seriously considering it. So maybe there's a commune that's a, an anti pinky swear commune and will fit right in. People pinky swearing at all times knowing that it it's always meaningless. Yeah. No, a dinky square. <laughs> a dinky square? A dinky square. <laughs> that's like a really small square? No, that's when you put Look your, at that dinky square. That's when you put your dinkies together. Did you Did you see? What is a dinky? Uh, I mean, I think it's another You're name. motioning something as if you wien- have, you're not a, making this a up wiener. as you're saying it. A wiener. You're calling a wiener a dinky? I've never had before. I was but just you, trying to come up with a joke. You saw Bad Trip. I saw the first half of it and then I fell did asleep. Did you get to the, to the dinky part? Oh, yes. Um, the finger trap, Don't, but- I mean, it wasn't fingers that were in there. <laughs> what well, I mean, that, what a what a crazy movie. Yeah, man. it's nuts, man. Dang, I don't. I've got it's my wreck today. It's, so I res- that's not your wreck. I reserve the right to recommend the first half of Bad Trip. I don't know. It's kind of you know you know if you doze off and then you wake up and you're like I'm maybe I can just keep watching this. Oh that, yeah, you can doze off and come back. That and- happened, but there's so many points in Bad Trip that like. Waking up and realizing what you're watching is just like it's it was frightening. Yeah. Like I was sh- I was shocked. It's like that's not how a man wants to wake up on the couch. Yeah, in a well, you know, a finger Jess- trap with other things trapped in it. Jesse and I watched it together, and the thing that she <laughs> was saying, she was like, "I don't know if you can make this kind of movie anymore." Like seriously, because well, it just taking, was made. Taking it, I know, I know. That's the thing. She was like, "I don't know how I feel laughing at it because." Taking advantage of people and like the idea of consent is something that yeah. if you're making really crazy prank videos, you're not getting any of that because you want to get the authentic reactions. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking a stand on saying that I think prank videos should be outlawed. And we don't know <laughs> that they didn't get post scene consent. I don't yeah, know. I but think is that's that how consent? Some- I, we're not. That's yeah. not the conversation we're having today. Yeah. Let's what? Just get away from this. <laughs> this is not like. So yeah, I don't know if we're recommending it. It frightened me when I woke up. Yeah, yeah. So we're take the, that. We just watched it. We're not. Ta- we're not recommending. We're just talking about it. You know, I teased to this in the last episode. I, as the as the world. I mean, you know, we're looking through this. Los Angeles lens of return to normalcy from um, COVID and being locked down, quarantined, safe, and what, you know, doing all these precautions. But so maybe we're a little behind. Maybe you're in a spot where you're listening and you're like, well, I, things feel kind of already back to normal for me. I'm mouth kissing strangers already. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But at this point right now, I am very much trying to figure out how I'm going to re-engage with my life as it was. And a lot of people, I've seen, it was funny, because right when I began sensing this in myself, and I was talking about it with Jesse, you know, she's a Twitter queen, she's immediately points me to like five tweets that had already emphasized the same sentiment, which is, as things get ready to turn back to normal, you start feeling a little anxiety about life returning to normal. Now for some people that might be like sometimes not just a little anxiety. I mean. Some people it might be like a social anxiety, like I don't wanna get around people. That's not it for me, it's just, and I'm not much of a routine person, but there's something about the fact that we've been able to conduct our business kind of uninterrupted, right? Like so we're, 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 one, we're one of the lucky privileged that we, we get to do our business in a way that is, I mean it's changed a lot, but yeah, it's, I, our, it's unencumbered in a lot of ways. Our business has been altered drastically, but we've gotten so used to it that it is the new normal. And I mean, that's a whole other podcast to get into but be, all yeah, that. But, but being at home, uh, not traveling uh, a lot like we used to do, 
I mean, I haven't been going to the gym and I kind of turned my garage into a gym. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, and I kind of am into this sort of predictability and routine and and sort of like the simple life. I'm being I'm, home every I'm night. I'm surprised to hear that from you because that's not something I would expect or that's not maybe you, it surprises you that you have those feelings that I'm, well up. I'm ready to travel cuz for me, but I'm not ready for the day-to-day -day life to turn back into hectic always all over the scramble. place. Yeah. But you know for me, my personality type like totally gotten used to my world being smaller and more predictable and insulated and it just feels, I mean, more narrow, but there's a good side to that too because it, there's a sense of increased safety and you know, for me. Safety. Control. Oh yeah, control, I understand. I mean, it started with safety and so you kind of have this ingrained sense of like, you you have, some people may struggle with this innate feeling of, I've trained myself to believe that safety is is hunkered down. So going out must mean the opposite. Even oh, though being fully vaccinated and the you know the, the realities of a full vaccination and the safety associated with that is just something that like the facts don't immediately translate into feelings is what we're that's a big discussion that's happening in our home. Um you know I was even telling Lincoln last night I was trying to paint a picture for you know, once we're fully vaccinated, these are some things that we can start doing. And it, he got this look on his face like he hadn't even thought about it. <laughs> you know, it's like, because you go, you, you live in this space where it's like, you don't even, just don't even think about what could be or what you're missing out on type of thing. And then so it's like you compartmentalize. And so me giving him, just starting to paint a picture for how things could open up, it was like, he got this, this he just kind of stared for a while and then he got this big grin on his face. It must be nice. You mean you're telling me that your kid hasn't constantly berated you for a full year about how he, all the stuff he can't do? Constantly arguing with you about that? No, he's just going. That's the way it's been at my house. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's kind of like when you let a, you, you know, you got this dog in a kennel. Maybe they've been in there for a long time. Maybe it's their safe cave space. And then you open the door and you're like, He's just gonna. He's just laying there. I think what you're saying is out. that your family is much more susceptible to being in a cult than mine. Which brings me to this sense of a commune, because like, it, as we've been talking about communes, I've had to really work to not use the word cult every single time. There, they are. Well, there's a reason. There's a different associated. thing, but there's some overlap that we can talk about. But yeah, this like, um, if instead of returning back to the big wide world. What if I just skipped over to commune life where it's a you know a, a defined group of people with shared values that are keeping things simple. And you have to imagine that most people who are in communes, who were in communes before COVID and in communes through COVID and after COVID, their lives have probably changed yeah, like less. COVID what? They're like, I mean, yeah, we're in a commune. Big whoop. I mean, sustainability, peaceful cooperation, no bills, no boss, no. Uh, no boss. Uh, no responsibilities. Think again, <laughs> just, <laughs> my friend. You know, it's <laughs> like just food that everyone gets to eat. No competition. It does seem wonderful. It, it does seem wonderful. Connecting with nature and with strange people who are misfits in normal society, but f perfect fits uh, in some of these communes that we'll talk about. Um, I'm like, let's go. And I'm not saying it like the kids use the phrase as like just uh, a form of. They say let's like, go. Like a positive expletive. <laughs> yeah. No, like you mean like it's a, that's a new slang or? Like... What? I mean. It's a few years old, but everybody's like, "Let's go!" If they like something, you. But this is like newer than just the not, old, like ten, is, like fifty years ago. Let's go! Like you would say to like a team that you're cheering for. This is like slang. I've I've heard your own children say this. I don't listen to what my kids talk about. You, you haven't heard like I mean, if you listen to the baby, every so often he's gonna interject, "Let's go!" And he's not asking people to come with him somewhere. 
he's just like, yeah, it's, it, a, it's, it's a, a celebratory I don't think there's phrase. Any, I, but I think I don't think it's changed. What I thought what you were saying is that let's go has changed meaning since like the 50s. And I don't think it has. Yes, it has. It doesn't mean let's gather together and head towards the same no, destination. No, I know, no, I know I'm just saying that like let's go. Like like get pumped up. Yeah. It's not that's not what it means now. It doesn't mean let's get pumped up. Okay, what does it mean now? It means I'm excited. <laughs> it it, it <laughs> just <Okay>. means. <laughs> it feels like with some semantics here. I, let, no. Let's get excited. Oh no, what am I saying? Let's get pumped up and let's get excited. Sort of feel like no, the same thing. Let's go is trying to pump someone up, like to conjure up the energy to do something. But let's go is like, it's just like, I love this. I'm celebrating this. I don't need to conjure anything up. I have an overflow of emotion okay. that now translates into a hip hop track interjection. So you're not saying you want to go to a commune. You're saying you're excited about the idea. No, so I you am are saying using the, it in the. I am using way. it in the, in okay. the in the traditional okay, old out of touch sense that I'm you not, should understand. I'm not confused. Let you and I head towards the world of communes and decide which one we want to physically go to. And live, okay? Are we clear? Yeah, I, I'm clear now. Um, but yeah, but they want they want them to be called intentional communities because people intend to go there, and they're not like held there against their free will. At least that's what they well, say. Communes have a bad rap, which we'll we'll get into. Well, a throwback to a conversation we had um, with the uh, when we're talking about Pythagoras. He is credited We're always as, talking about Pythagoras. as uh, creating the first intentional community in recorded history at Homokion, the Greek word, uh, in 525 BCE. Um, they tried to create an ideal society, gave up private property and meat and apparently beans as well, as we discussed. I would just interject quickly here. People were, people were getting I take killed. issue. I take issue with this. This is kinda like, uh, when a white guy in a boat like discovers something that you know brown people who've been living there for thousands of years have already known about for a well, long that's, time. Well, I guess because, that's fair, yeah. Because um, intentional community is basically the history of the human race. Like the idea of private property is something that the Western world brought over here to the Native Americans. So, like the idea of intentional community, I think, is actually the baseline understanding of human. Community, but it wasn't until agriculture and property and all that stuff that we then had to kind of undo that to then create what we're calling an intentional community. I guess in 525 BC. Yeah, you know. A, okay, point taken. Within the context of Western civilization. Okay. Yeah. Then you've got to have if if you if you have the shared belief or approach to life that that means you're going to give up your personal belongings, which you have. If you're giving it up in order to be a member of a community where you're sharing everything, basically post property ownership, the 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 post the the idea of property ownership, yes. I mean, the early Christians they lived communally. Uh, a few centuries later, Christian monasteries became a major form of international. In I said international intentional community, uh, so we could become monks. You know, you know, this is interesting because I'm reading this book kind of about early Christian history, and uh, it's actually kind of fascinating just how you know, whatever word you want to use, uh, communist, socialist, progressive, whatever you wanted to use, mm -hmm. that early Christians were at the time. And I'm not talking about in the like sense of like the way they saw government or necessarily, but just the way that their community was very much communist in the strictest sense of the word. And it was like, it was the lower class, it was men and women, and it was, and, and it's so interesting that Christianity got hijacked by the powers that be, hmm. uh, and kind of became what it has been for, you know, over, well over a thousand years. But in the early stages it was very, it was it was kind of a different thing. It was it was a lot more about class, and it was a lot more about uh, kind of rebelling against the powers that be. And then the powers that be were like, "Oh, we can use this to our advantage," and kind of created the hierarchy that we kind of see within the, you know, the church. Am I right in remembering that in 
in Paul's letter to one of the churches, you know, he kind of talks about the mechanism of um, sharing everything, right? Well, and he kind of puts some specifics in that about like, and like kind of like the the heart and the motivation behind like giving up your possessions for for the common. I'm good. sure he talks about that. I mean, it, I think it's mostly in uh, Acts. You know, Luke wrote Luke and Acts, and so ah, that and, that may be what I'm thinking about. Acts, you know, basically the 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 you know history of the early church kind of talks about what they did and kind of sold their possessions and came together and lived communally and and uh, we're kind of specifically specifically reacting to what was happening on a societal level and that was one of the things that made it attractive and also controversial at the time because it was kind of saying that the authority doesn't lie with these dudes who say that uh, they're in charge authority lies with God so. Um, but it quickly got taken and you know distorted. We could in my, also, in my opinion, we could also go to Israel and join a kibbutz, kibbutz, kibbutz. I think is how you would say it. So um, I mean, Bless those are, those are around now. They've been they've been around, and there's like there's there's the religious and the non-religious kind. There's like and there's a lot more of the non-religious. Okay, but sorry, I, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Well, and I and I would think that this is something that, especially with what we're seeing with uh, what we've experienced in 2020 and 2021 thus far, um, you know, this deep wealth inequality and um, people just so many people struggling. I think the idea of kind of stepping out of this pursuit of the American dream. Um, and I know, um, you know, we're not talking about just Americans, but I'm, we're in America. Uh, it's gotta be an attractive thing. Like, you know, you, you mean I can quit trying to keep up with the Joneses and worry the old about- The cliche, the rat, the Joneses, the rat race. Going the to the right college and getting the right job to pay off the deep debt that I acquired in order to go to college. The idea of saying, hey, can't we all just get along I believe that this ha has never been a more attractive idea. I mean, in recent history, this has got to be a super attractive idea right now. So I do think that we probably should start with some cautionary tales before you get too excited. <laughs> okay, yeah. I About being a part of a commune. All right. Or an intentional Let, community. All right, let's get into the bad news. Um, or just, you know, we need to tread lightly. The one that you've all heard about, uh, the Jonestown Massacre, where the saying, don't drink the Kool-Aid comes from. Uh, late 70s. I did Jim, not know the details of this. Yeah, so lots of lots of really good documentaries that you can watch about this. Um, but late 70s, Jim Jones was a preacher. Uh, he was, he began his commune for social justice and equality. He was calling it the People's Temple. That sounds good. Yeah. For the people. But you it's, know? Got, it's got like the temple in it. That seems fancy. But then he made the move. He moved it from San Francisco, San Francisco, San Francisco, <laughs> San Francisco to Guyana. Uh, first of all, you just got a, a okay. Oh, okay, maybe a red flag here. He's moving. He's moving further away from prying eyes. Right. I mean, that's one way to see it. And I think that's what was happening. Mm. So people started to because there was a lot of American people who were involved with this, and they were worried that they were being held against their will. And it kind of became this story so much so that a congressman, Leo Ryan, decides to visit to make sure that the residents are okay. And this is the late seventies. Late seventies, and uh, he shows up along with four others, and they are shot to death when they get out of the plane at the airstrip. So another red flag. Yeah, that's. <laughs> That's not a good start to this the diplomatic is, yeah, this is a big oversight red flag. mission. Dang. And then shortly thereafter, I don't really remember the timeline, but Jones, he forced or enc strongly encouraged uh, his followers to drink a cyanide-laced flavor aid, starting with the children. Poor Kool-Aid, it wasn't even Kool-Aid. Yeah. It was flavor aid. Right. You know, but, but now you got this saying, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Matter of fact, I heard it on an episode of Survivor. You hear it everywhere, but of course I hear everything on Survivor because that's right, all I that's listen all to these watch. days. Yeah, it's your uh, sole and source of media. Th and th that's gonna ha have to be in any commune I attend. Don't uh, drink the flavor aid. just doesn't sound quite, because like, what's flavor aid? Right. Uh, so the, some I'm, people tried to flee and they shot them. Kool-Aid survived it, but some, those people did. <laughs> some people tried to flee and they shot them. Because they didn't drink the Kool-Aid. And over Damn. 900 people 
Including kids. Were killed. Yeah, almost a thousand people. That is that is gross. So anyway, I mean, it's- 900 people? It may have sounded awesome at the beginning. That's a lot of flavor aid. But, uh, so that's one cautionary tale. Gosh, now, you and I have talked about the Source family before. We may have talked about it on this show. There was there was a, a Netflix documentary, like in the wake of, um, what was that Netflix documentary that the Duplass brothers were executive producers of? Uh, country, back country. Uh, no. Uh, no country for commune people. Oh. Uh, Wild, wild country. Wild, wild great, country. Great feeling when you remember something great that series. you've forgotten. That was, that was so. On the heels of that, I think we were looking for other stuff to watch, and we I watched this documentary. You watched it too on oh, the, this the is Source a Family. Great documentary as well. Um, World War Two vet who became known as Father Yod. Great name. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was his original name, Father Yod. That's one thing I love about comedy is that. You can change your name. You can change everybody's name, as yeah. it turns out. Right. He created the first vegetarian restaurant in LA, mm -hmm. um, had many young wives, and had many younger children with those young wives. Mm -hmm. That's how children work. They recorded music and sold the albums. Uh, very hippy dippy, like, seemed like a great time. 70s situation. Um, but his caution, you know, you gotta watch who you're following because th this is when this type of, you know, this is when you get into cult territory in both of these situations. But the thing that I didn't realize until I went back and read about this was how Father Yod died. Um, they had moved, they'd sold their restaurant and moved to Hawaii in 1974. And then on August 25th, 1975, according to Wikipedia, Despite having no previous hang gliding experience, Father Yod decided that he would indeed go hang gliding, presumably solo. Um, Yod used a hang glider to leap off a 1300 foot, that's 400 meters, right? Cliff on the eastern shore of Oahu. Um, spoiler alert, he died. I already said that. He crash landed on the beach, get this, Suffering no external injuries, he just looked like Rick Rubin lying on a beach. You know, right. it's just like white dude with a really long white beard, mm -hmm. <laughs> like Rick looks like these days, just laying on a beach, suffering no external injuries. But he was unable to move, and he died nine hours later. No, that's a horrible death. If that's what getting into a commune means, I'm out. I well, mean, there's a guy at the end of my street who has what, a hang glider. That's what and I leading look at that thing, in. and it freaking it makes my balls hurt. I don't understand that. Yeah, you never stood on the edge of a cliff. You and say your this, balls hurt. You say this every single time. It's a defense mechanism for not falling off a cliff or yachting your way down on a hang glider. Well, I I, I didn't. My yachts tell me I didn't don't hang glide. I, I didn't tell you this. Uh, so you know, a, a couple weeks ago we talked about the eject button. That you press in order to lots know, of convo leak the lizard, that, yeah. and uh, in our conversation that you weren't able to join last night with our college friends, uh, it was confirmed that neither of them knew about the button. What? Yeah, they didn't have a. They, they haven't pressed the button. So apparently, something I thought was very common. We, we educated a lot of people. Is what I learned. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, especially me taking it to the next level. Okay, so yeah, uh, in, I don't know, I know how it ended for Father Yod, and first of all, I do remain open to the fact that I might be Father Yod reincarnated just because of the time of his death and the time of my birth and this is the way we Your look. Your affinity for hang gliding? Um, I like the idea of hang gliding, never done it, 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 but it doesn't make my balls hurt when I think about it. But let's get, let's get into right. some current ones and make a decision. But first, let's promote. Some merch. Uh, you got speak, a good looking. Speaking of cults and communes, I mean, this yeah. is one of the more culty Illuminati ish. They can, let's make sure they can see. I it. mean, basically, you know, this is supposed to be a magic eight ball, but it's that triangle, which is the you know, which is definitely Illuminati ish. Yeah. Mythical outlook. What does it say? Good mythical morning. Outlook mythical. Yes. Outlook mythical. It just says mythical, mythical outlook mythical. Oh, okay. Mythical, mythical outlook mythical. And if you shake. It changes. Yeah, it changes in your brain. We should we should have made the shirt where when you shake the friction with your booby area or sternum 
makes that triangle make something else appear. Do you think we could have put a little Hull? pocket in there that held liquid and a little dice? Why don't we just make it a, a hole? Die? You can just see your chest hair through it. Well, why don't we sell a That's t-shirt a with two holes over the nipples? Not everybody's nipples are in the same place. I've thought about this many times. Cut them yourself. But we sell the scissors. Okay, all right. Mythical.com. You, you might be onto something. Rep your boys. Okay, tell us about uh, a current cult that we might want to join. I wanted to start close, okay? So any of you in America, Com sorry, can join commune. Us. I keep saying cult. I'm I sorry. Know, it's hard. And there's commune. a reason for that. Intentional community. Um. So let's go to Central Tennessee near the town of Summertown, Tennessee. Oh. Um, this place is called The Farm. Uh, there's 200 residents. I like everything about this so far. Um, it started in the 70s by this hippie guy, last name Gaskin. He still lives there. Gaskin. But, but the, I mean, in the, 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 this commune, which is like, you know, it's out in rural Tennessee. You got a whole bunch of buses that people are living in. Um, mm -mm, buses in the eighty, it, it got up to like twelve hundred people wow. in the eighties, and then they kind of they had to change things in order to. Um, they had a lot of debt, and then they had to they had to figure out how to. Okay, you you can't you got to start supporting yourself. And of course, a lot of people left when they're like, "Hey, it's a commune, but you support yourself." Yeah, eh, what's the point? That doesn't work, but. They kind of revamped everything, and they they developed their own little cottage industries, and um, now they're at two hundred people, and you can go visit for like a long weekend and decide if you want to stay there. It seems like a lot of journalists go there in order to write a little piece to to titillate the minds of people like us. But I mean, I'll just point out some of the pros with this place. It's 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 in America. It's, so it's accessible to us. Um, I've been to Tennessee. If you need to get to Nashville, you know, in an hour and a half or so, you can do that. Is you it get, close to Gatlinburg? Because that's what I'm concerned about. Um, they have an extremely successful midwifery. You know, the the People wife who help you have birth. Yes, the wife of the founder. Um, I I think her name's like Ida May or something. She's more famous than him because of the book she wrote about uh, midwifery. In fact, the farm was the setting for the rebirth of midwifery for the United States and the creation of the modern home birth method. Wow. Move, and movement. I love so, yeah. watching those on YouTube. So you can live in a bus and then have a baby in the bus. So is this just people who are members of the commune who are having babies or is it like if you wanna have a baby, you can go? I don't know, but I think because she's so famous, maybe people will go to her for, I mean, if you really wanna like have a famous midwife, she's the one. She's the She's one. She's still around? Yeah, you gotta be uh, vegan. But that's ki that's kind of an assumption I for all of this, seems, right? That seems right. Uh, and there's a lot of, you know, with the whole changeover and everything, there are still some residents that were there from the beginning in the 70s and went through the whole changeover and they saw it in all its glory. And like I said, even the founder and his wife are still there, but there's a lot of infighting between those boomers and newer residents uh, who are coming in, trying yeah. to do it, trying to do it differently. Yeah, I, which that kind of reminds me, you, you have this idea of you got this group of like-minded people that you're living off the land and supporting each other, and every you know, everybody helps raise the kids, and you share everything. But, and and this is not really that much that much of a legitimate comparison, but it's kind of all that I have to go on. Like in all the like Bible study groups that I was involved in, that you were involved in like growing up, especially like the young married groups, like once we graduated from college, mm -hmm. for me it was like, it, it was no way like a commune except that like you get together with these people and you start making these connections with a small group of people and it gets really exciting. And over the course of my, my life in that world, mm -hmm. there were a few phases or iterations of a small group getting together, like a Bible study or like a family group or whatever you might call it. And you'd be like, this is a magical connection. We all really like each other. It's like, now we have this like dynamic friend group and it never, it never lasts more than like two years. Mm -hmm. Because it, you know what? It comprises of people. 
You know, pe- people getting like getting in each other's business is a tough thing to maintain. And even when it just comes to hey, let's get together once a week and encourage each other and help each other and in this case study the Bible, it was like we were all very well intentioned and it wasn't that um there wasn't it wasn't dogmatic in really any way, but still the personalities and like the slight different pulls of agenda. I want it to be like this. Well, I want to do this and this is the vision I have and my my needs aren't being met. My expectations aren't being met. It's so any group of people it's not just a church thing or a commune thing. It's so hard. Well, and I to think keep there, it going. There's a there's an additional factor that may actually be the sort of foundational problem even beyond the personalities. Hang gliders? Not hang gliders. The fact that you don't have to be in that group. In the okay. modern world, yeah. every community that you're a part of, that's why they call it intentional community. Mm-hmm. It's not, we have no choice but to be this community. That's called a prison. <laughs> right. Or a cult. Well, no, but if you go back, okay, first of all, like if you go way back in the distant past where there was no choice but to be a part of your community, and even in some places still in the world where it's just like, I can't, I don't make the choice about where I go to church. There's one church in town. Yeah. I don't make the choice about what religion I'm gonna be. There's one option in right. this particular place. And when when your community is constituted in that way, uh, there's just so few choices that those personalities are something you deal with. But in modern, in the modern world, in modern America, in the in the South world, and this is true all of America, but like if you think about this Bible study group, if I don't like the voice of the person leading the Bible study, There's I can go another to another, another Bible study in the same church, or Pro- I can go to another church. in the church. same house. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like. I mean, well, there's a there. If you want an, just an all women's one, that one's happening downstairs. Yeah, you, we've got we're overwhelmed with options, and so I mean, you literally can go to a first Baptist church or a second Baptist church, or even in some towns, I've seen a freaking third Baptist church in the same town, and that's just the Baptists, and that's just the ch- Christians. So, and let's not let's not just pick on. Church, I, do, I mean. I'm saying this is everybody. This any, is all. Any is, group of people. Yeah. Like if you wanna talk about, uh, you know, I, don't, I mean, our our friend group post-church, you know, I mean, th- that, there was, it was like, there was a dynamic experience for like a little over a year and then things just, you know, people went their separate ways. Well, a lot of people have said, uh, even after us telling our stories and, you know, because we, exhibit an openness towards spirituality in general and we're not trying to be like naturalists, atheists and and um, just basically rule out all mystical things. Mm-hmm. People are like, you know it sounds like you, you guys would really enjoy a Unitarian Universalist church. Now, I'm not saying I, I wouldn't and I'm not saying that I would never try it but the idea that somehow because that particular group of people is committed to a more open, or progressive mindset that then there, there would no longer be the problems of people working together and ego, that's just not true. It, it, no matter how wonderful the foundational principles of your community, like you said, it's still gonna be people and it's still gonna be people in the context of this society where I can be like, I don't have to be at this place, I can just go to the other place. And if that's if, as long as those options exist, long-term, peaceful community of any kind is gonna be very difficult. Even if you don't, to get back to communes, you don't have like a, str- like a strong centralized leader, like a dictator that kind of makes it more cultish. I was reading about another one in Virginia that like, you know, they, they all shared the duties of raising the children in this particular commune and there was a couple that wanted to have another child but there was a protocol that you had to go and get permission because we all got to take care of this to place. have a child, so it's like it's even coming from like a logistic place that makes sense. But you find yourself having to get permission to have a child. Well, um, but in, you which, know, which is something that completely rubs up against the rugged individualism of our modern society and especially America. The idea that I would have to get that I wouldn't own this piece of property and the fact that I would have to ask permission to have a kid. It seems almost offensive to, to most of us. But I do think the idea that, hey, I'm a member of this collective and every decision that I make is gonna impact every other member of the collective, it kind of makes sense. It sort makes of follows. Sense, but it, 
but yeah. it violates our sense of individualism. I mean, we went to different churches um, as newlyweds uh, and as we graduated from college. Like, we, we didn't actually, you know, we never went to the same, we grew up in the same church, but we didn't go to the same church right. um, after college. Right. Until the point where we no longer went to church. We didn't think people could handle us going to the same church. <laughs> um, I mean, it was good to have some autonomy, but I mean, so in in that phase of life, did you have a similar experience to me that like you had this supercharged small group that you thought was going to be like connected forever? Did you, did you did you experience the magic before the disappointment? Uh, I it, I wouldn't say it was as uh, marked of a magic and a disappointment as it seems like you're talking about, but I completely understand. I mean, we had a we had a pretty consistent group. It was sort of a core group of people, uh, probably for five six years or so. Um, but again, it was the kind of thing that we came together as a Bible study, and it was a great time. But there wasn't a whole lot of interaction outside of that group, and then Sunday. Because yeah. everybody had other friends and everybody had their lives and their jobs. Again, you did. There was nothing that was forcing your involvement with uh, with with the other family, and so it wasn't as it just wasn't as stark. But I, I but I but yeah, I completely get what you're saying. I'm passing on the farm because I'm not going to have any more kids, and uh, I love the idea of living in a van, but not a bus. The reason I'm passing on the farm is because uh, it just doesn't seem cool enough to me. But I'm, I'm about to give you something that All I right. think is getting into. Because if I'm going to do a Bring commune, it. I want to do, I want it to be weird. Let's go. Um, how about Auroville in Indiana? <laughs> or India? <laughs> I thought I thought that said Indiana. <laughs> India, man, big difference. Yeah, yeah, it's not Indiana. I was just I was throwing you it's a curveball. Right, it's so in we, India. You got to travel to this one. It better be good. Now you can go to the Oroville.org website, which I'm, is I'm right got now. a lot of content. Okay, I'm this is a right multicultural now. city started in the late '60s. They believe in human unity and transformation of consciousness. Over three thousand residents from fifty-eight nations. Residents are expected to build their own house and make donations to the community, but beyond this, all necessities, including public school, utilities, health care, are covered by the community, um, which is technically partially funded by the Indian government, but that let's not complicate things. Now, let me just say, hmm. I have created what I am calling the cool shit factor, okay? Okay, yeah. To judge these these communes. About. All right, all right. And. Auroville, that's, that's really what it's all about. Auroville, How cool is your shit? Auroville has a lot of cool shit, and let me just tell you a few things. The uh -huh. first thing. I see these pictures. Now, man. they started the community in this area, in, in, in uh, not Indiana, India, and they decided that the center of the entire thing would be this, I think it's banyan tree, I think it's how you say that, but those are those sort of iconic uh, you've seen these trees on like postcards if you haven't seen them in well, person. The, the, the Buddha was enlightened under it, under one. And so there's this banyan tree that is in the middle of this kind of stark landscape and they decided that this was the center of the community. I just like that kind of thing. You know me and you with our like declaring a tree special. Yep. We do, we do this and, but that's, they didn't just say hey, here's a tree, no. Then yeah. they constructed this thing called uh, the Matramander, and this is Matramandir. It looks like a golden Epcot center, yes. right? Like, or it looks like what? Well, not it looks it's like a shiny the, the, Epcot sphere. The sphere at Epcot, and this, this thing is, has took forever to build, but in first of all, you can visit this thing. Like anybody can visit this thing, but inside, oh wow, this golden ball structure. There is the largest optically perfect glass globe in the world. And on the website, they go through all, how they had this thing manufactured. So, so like a big paperweight. It, well, but it's optically perfect. Me, hold on, optical meaning it looks perfect, but it's probably not. <laughs> no, like, it's meaning, not microscopically perfect. Well, I think it's as perfect. There's no other glass globe of this size that is this perfect. And what did they do with it? I mean, I'm sure they get like energy from it or they something. Look at I don't know. It. I mean, they meditate cool. on it. And do you sit on it and try to hatch it? I don't think you sit on it. I think that would probably be like a violation of something. Yeah, that's, that's probably rule number two. I don't even know if you can touch it or lick it. That's rule number one. But you one. can look at it. 
Yeah. And I, I'm sure we're gonna get facts wrong about this. Sorry, those of you who are like from, welcome, first of all, those of you from Auroville who are watching, welcome oh, to the show. Thanks, we this think you've pod, got some cool shit it's going a on. podcast called Ear Biscuits. We, we do it every week. Going, we're coming for you. If you wanna broadcast this. I didn't mean this, it like that. You could broadcast this inside the, uh, the the I know I'm saying it wrong. Metromander. Put this on repeat, like this part of the podcast. Just yeah, loop yeah. it. Did you you know what? Feel free. We are officially giving you permission to take this our description of your place and put it in a little video vignette on your website. Okay, in like a video brochure, if you will. Anyway, you got a lot of cool shit and. <laughs> There's I like also a, I like that big focal point, the Epcot awesome. focal point. That I, you I don't want to just show up and, and see, see buses. buses. Yes, exactly. I want to see something that like oh, the, so well, that came, alien that may came have been from involved. The heavens. Right. Yes. They don't just have that. They have a giant amphitheater, and in the middle of the amphitheater is just this marble urn. Just okay. a marble urn. I see a picture where they're like, it's a huge fire. I, yeah, I mean the website's got some very intoxicating images. <laughs> so anyway, I know there's more cool shit. That's just what we're going to talk about now. Uh, the pros of this one: you got your health care, your school taken care of. You can stay for a trial period. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long is that? Uh, I don't know. As long as it needs to be. Large group, diverse group, very high cool shit factor. It was started by a woman. They called the mother, and I want to. I, I want to take a second to camp out here, because okay. you know, I'm generalizing, but you know, does everyone camp out there? When or? a dude starts a cult, ninety nine point seven percent of the time, it's because he wants to get with a bunch of women. He wants to get his yacht on. Yeah, but a woman or get his yachts off. But a, a, in my experience, women are not just interested in ripping families apart and having sex with everybody as much as men tend to be. Wow, right? So, I think that there could be, this could be a purer motivation here. I think they call her the mother and I think the fact that she started, now she's dead, but I think she, according to them, she passed on into a different form and still is involved in some way. I, maybe she's in the ball. Or maybe she's in the urn, which would make more sense. No comment. Again, if you wanna take this part out of the, the little, video brochure on the website if I'm getting all the details about the mother wrong. I'm sorry, you can do that. Yeah. I'm just saying I love the fact that a female started your 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 commune. Okay. Uh cons. You gotta relocate to India. You gotta build your own house. You know, I don't like the I, I don't even like to change the light bulbs anymore. I mean I just gonna be honest. I did a bunch of like manual stuff like in my twenties, like yeah. Work, you know, I was like a, a Mr. Fix-It man, like working on rental properties and stuff, and I, I, I just. I think communes. I don't are, like it. You, you bring up a good point. I think communes are really for that like young and vivacious type that wants to go grab, grab life by the yards. There's a lot of <laughs> things like, I want to do. Though. And then uh, if you're old, it's because you've like you've you've been there for a while. You know. I like the idea of maybe gardening a little bit, maybe a little bit of woodwork, just for like an artistic standpoint but not building a house. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And also, and I don't know if this is necessarily a con, but you know, the idea is to lose your, your, your sense of personal possessions and your ego, which I actually think that that's a positive. I wouldn't put that in a con uh, list. Sound, I, sounded like you did though. Well, uh, I think you put this in a con, actually. Yeah, I did. Uh, so uh, that, I, maybe that's I love a, my ego. Maybe that says He's something about great. You. I, the more I would love to lose if I lost my ego completely, yeah, that'd be great. Then I would lose any desire for personal possessions, so I wouldn't care. So that's a positive to me. If they, if I go and I, I don't know. I guess if I if I sit on or touch the the glass orb, maybe my ego gets taken and stored inside the optically perfect orb. And then maybe if I want it and I want to leave and I think I got to go to America, I need my ego. I touch it and get it back. Is that how it works? You can take this out of the, take this off the website if that's not true. I don't think that one just rolls into a commune and then explains how all of their very meaningful things work. <laughs> hey, I got news for you guys. I'm gonna be sitting on this orb and I'll, you know, I'll post the times when I'm not on it if you wanna bring in tourists to look at it. Yeah, right. Otherwise, you're just gonna be looking at me. No, I was just saying that like- Kinda nesting on this thing. No, no, I'm gonna spend a lot of time. I'm gonna deposit my ego into oh. it and then I'm gonna walk out. Okay. And then if I need my ego for some sort of like competition or like so a you, sporting event, 
So by I'm gonna go play golf, I need my ego. <laughs> so you're losing your ego yeah. into this sphere, but you're basically doing that to assert that you think everyone would want to look at your ego, which kind of doesn't sound like losing your ego. That is how you're interpreting it. I'm not, you can't see anything in the orb. It's not, my ego is not the only ego that's in the orb. I'm assuming everyone's ego is in the org. orb. But it is an org, because this oroville.org is the website. But what I'm telling you, Rhett, is that you're, you're misinterpreting everything that I'm saying, no, which is why you don't. No one's you, you ego would, is in the orb, so you if you wouldn't put, make a good cult. If member. you put your ego in the orb, it's going to be the only one in there. Period. I you think, just can't tell people that. Oh, you know, everyone's ego. No, I'm in making there. some assumptions here, and I might yeah, be wrong. Right. I'm just saying, you if are. There are egos deposited in the orb, or the urn, or the tree. Then <laughs> I'm part of that. I'll do that. Let's go to Scotland. Oh, I, th I thought you'd be into this. Yeah, I, I used to, I was Scottish, Scot Scottish shit one time. The Findhorn Eco Village. Now, don't okay. get your hopes up. There is no hidden horn. No, because they, they found not, it. That's not what this is about. Okay. It, you know, it reminds me of like Christy went to Meredith College, all women's school, where they it was like they did all these summer camp exercises, like by class, by like freshman class. Junior C, and I think when you were a junior, you were supposed to find the crook. Yeah. That was hidden by the seniors, and it was the crook, I think, I don't even know what it was. I think it's just, I, I've never seen it, and I never asked Christy what it was. I just have this, I like a crook at, like I picture the shot top of a, the bent top of a cane or like a shepherd's staff. I don't know why, but that's what I always thought a crook was, and I'm just now realizing I've never seen it or really asked Christy what it was. You could probably look it up on the internet. But it was kind of this game to find the crook, kind of like finding a hidden immunity idol in Survivor. Right, uh-huh. Boy, I, I, don't, I actually don't wanna be the guy that keeps talking about Survivor. Well, you, you were too late. <laughs> it's just. Um, we found that horn. <laughs> <laughs> um, but finding the crook is not like find horn eco village. This thing started in the 60s, but it didn't take its current form until 1982 when residents made an effort to show that an environmentally unobtrusive community could flourish both socially and economically, mm. and obviously. Um, Spiritually. No, physically, like n n naturally. Okay. Uh, it's been noted as having the smallest environmental footprint of any town in the modern world. Whoa, okay, all right. Yeah. Their building codes encourage like using found materials. They use wind turbines or turbines, however, whatever your, you know, your jollies are. And they got a water treatment apparatus called the Living Machine. Okay, now we're okay. I like that. That's weird. Which makes use of algae, snails, and plant life to purify the community's drinking water. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so this place is, you know, it's like if you look on the website, it kind, it's got this Scottish countryside farm vibe but there's there's actually a lot of buildings and and a, and a good amount of streets but how many um, people do you know uh i don't know everybody bikes everywhere no one counts how many people there are okay so don't it. worry about got it. it got it got it um but yeah i definitely want a drink of this living machine I, i'm into this yeah you, you you can you have to build a house here too oh really and and you but I mean, there's more restrictions. You got to build it out of found material. Can't you just take like people leave or die? Can I just take that guy's house? Uh, like, maybe. Like, can I get on a waiting list and be my like, my ego is gonna live here I with you until you decide to move out, and I then just, I'll move in with I, my I ego. I want a waiting list, and I just want to be like, hey, I, I don't really want to build my house, but is when Walter dies, he's tall. He's probably got furniture that fits me, and, he, and he's tall, so he won't live long. Put me on the waiting list for Walters. Some houses House. are made from old wine barrels. That's kind of cool. There's, yeah. some, there's, that's a cool shit situation. You right? could maybe make an Instagram with that. Is that allowed? Um, I don't know. Do the, any of these places have an Instagram? No, they just have a website. They, they, they're all kind of behind. You know, they don't really seem to care about social media. Well, Instagram is all about ego anyway. So that's not a good. That's not a good thing. I don't to think introduce. you can have your phone out in public. And then you, it's 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 hard to like get reception in some of these places. That's good. This I one's like that. this was basically a demonstration farm. Mm -hmm. People come and they visit. and They're like, "Wow, look at how eco friendly this place is and self sustaining." It reminds me of the demonstration farm on the edge of Bowie's Creek. 
that I never knew what was what was going on there. It's like the one near my house. Before you, yeah, when I would ride my bike from my house to yours, I would have to go by the demonstration farm, and it was a Campbell University thing, right? And they had they had sheep everywhere, and I do remember that we went we took a trip there in like younger grades. Well, the funny thing is, is we took a field trip there. And because it was next to my house and I was a little boy who got into everything, I was like, I've been up in this demonstration farm a lot, a lot you already. You, yeah, you took me there. No, I would go and I would jump the fence and I would run around with the goats and the sheep and pet them and I would get in. I would get into everything at the demonstration farm without permission and then occasionally. Would people show up and would you demonstrate anything? Uh, I would be like, this is how a little, I'm gonna demonstrate how a little boy runs from the farmer and once he shows up. I, re I remember that we would both kind of scurry around and, and um, you know, trespass there was a, in the There was a male farm. goat that would ram you. He was, yeah, he was aggressive. He was very aggressive and I thought it was the coolest thing. But the daughter of the family that lived on the farm. Before it became the farm, that, oh, was, that, was, uh, that was Jennifer, Jennifer. Pearson. I didn't think we were saying the last names anymore. Oh, okay, Jennifer. I wonder what happened to Jennifer Pearson. <laughs> A man, I had a crush on her. You did, you you really liked her. I had a crush on her, man, in kindergarten. I spent the night at her she house did. one time because. Every time I say that I had a crush on her, you then you, this is this is what you say. Uh, you gloat. No, no, no. You spent the night with her. No. What? With she, her brother. She had a younger brother and you know me, I would invite myself to anybody he within. He was so much younger. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I he was three years younger. I think. That's a lot when you're in grade school. I would do three years or three years, three years younger or three, there was a six year range that I felt it was acceptable to spend the night at somebody's house because I was very interested in other people's homes. I and mean, you were like 11 years old and like you're spending the night with an eight year old. That's just weird. I, it, I readily admit that it's weird, but you, it wasn't about him. It was about, about the goat. It was about he lived on a farm. He had a sister my age. Uh, and I mean, he and, and he accepted my invitation for myself. It was a it was a white house. Yeah, one story. Right. I never went inside of it. I just thought a lot about what it might be inside there. Well, I could tell you. I mean, it's, there wasn't wasn't a lot of cool shit in there. Oh really? No. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's true of the eco village. I mean, again, I basically the only thing I'm touting is Scotland is fun. You can ride your bike everywhere. It's dangerous though. But you also I'm have to on, ride your bike everywhere. I'm on broke ankle there. Living machine water taste test. I like that much. idea. I like that idea. It was criticized a few years back for advertising alternative healing practices not recommended by science. They have since rebranded. But isn't that just part of being in one of these communities? Of course, I mean the whole right. new age deal. I mean of course they're yeah. healing in ways that don't Aren't scientific. So I, I like that's, what's, that's what it's about, right? They, they're teaching good things, and they're like they're not. I don't think they're religious or even philosophical. It's more just about like eco-friendly, self-sustaining. Well, that's attractive, but it's also hard to get people to fully commit. Right. It's a bit. You need them to swear off their own family and and <laughs> swear allegiance to something above themselves. Well, in order to be an effective commune, I think so. S Scotland doesn't do it. I think, um, you know, Gold Epcot. Right now, the, the leading candidate is still, the, is, is still is the, Auroville. Yeah, but I've got one that's going to maybe shake things up. The Federation. I gave you all the good ones of Dominher. This is a good one in Italy. First of all, always wanted to go to Italy. I mean, just right off the bat, the Federation of Dominher, often simply called Dominher is a commune eco-village, that's also an eco-village, and spiritual community situated in the Piedmont region of northern Italy about 50 kilometers, it's about 31 miles, north of the city of Turin. <laughs> Shroud of Turin, anybody? Oh yeah, you can swing by the Shroud and then go down there and visit. I know they make tours because I, I, I watched one on YouTube. Yeah, oh yeah, there's, okay. This thing was founded in 1975 by a dude, Oberto. So, so there's a questionable deal there just because a the dude founded it. But okay. he founded it with 24 followers, uh, and by the year 2000, it had grown to 800. I don't know exactly what it is now, but they hold kind of a mix of new age and neo-pagan beliefs, which I think is uh, feels right to yeah, me. Yeah, we're in a sweet spot now, neo-pagan. Now, hold on to your yods, because 
<laughs> the cool shit factor. Thank you for using that. The cool shit factor at this place is off the charts. But under the ground. The temples of humankind. Yes. We're talking hand dug 100 feet deep tunnels and chambers that have all this stuff, including. <laughs> I love hand dug stuff. That, but that's 100 feet too, I mean. That's crazy. I love underground stuff. I, just, I, I haven't done a whole lot of it, but the idea of being in caves and underground, especially thing that's been dug into the ground, big fan. I'm, I'm a fan thing. of it as long as you can walk around in a pretty much upright position. Once oh, you start oh, to oh. belly crawl underground. No, 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 we're not talking spelunking here. I ain't do, I've done that before. We're not talking spelunking, we're talking That's the scary. hall of spheres containing translucent orbs containing water imbued with spiritual energy intended for use in meditation. So we don't, we're not just talking about one perfect, we're talking about multiple spe spheres with water in them. Uh -huh. It's been imbued. The Hall of Earth, which has a dreamlike murals of landscapes and extinct animals calling attention to human responsibility to the planet's preservation. Yeah, every, uh, like, there's like paintings of these animals all over the wall, and it's kind of like walking through a human sized ant farm. Yeah. It's like, it's like you go through this, there's a door, and then it, it's, you can tell that uh, things were built on and added as they went. Yeah, it's and been it around a long time. It wasn't some grand scheme to this thing. It was more like big room. Let's paint it. Put orbs in here. Let's make a tunnel this way. And so it's you know it's very ant like. And I'm not done. Hall of mirrors, an area for meditation, surrounded on all sides by mirrors. I would and expect no less. The pièce de résistance. I don't know exactly where it's at but I can confirm that on the website, I saw a woman with a gong. <laughs> and <laughs> if, you're, if you've got a commune and there is not a gong, you have done it wrong. Just remember that, okay? Commune with no gong, you've done it wrong. Now, so, and, I, and I've only scratched the surface, so to speak. I mean, you do have to go 100 feet deep, but mm -hmm. this is a beautiful area and their website, let me. It's crazy Their, their website is crazy. What, what is the website? I, I guess I just went to, uh, I, this is the, I get a lot of this from the wiki entry, but they've got a good website too with a lot of information. And you can visit, you can Damanger. also visit. dot org. Okay. You should click be, on that. It should be dot orb. Sustainability is the present and the future. The thing that I notice is that they, they've got like these different, what are they called? Like they're, like symbols? Different, these symbols represent, there was a lot of organization in terms of like where you could fit in in this community and like your level of commitment. It's, it's, a, very, it's a grand system. But they're not trying to not be culty, which is what, something I appreciate. Let's just go ahead and admit that's what we're doing here, guys. It, it, we are a cult, right? It's like, this is not, hey, an intentional community, eco village. No, it's a freaking cult. Let's be honest about it. Let's embrace it. That's what. That's why we're doing this. So I like that about it. And also, I like the fact that they have four levels of participation: A, B, C, and D. Now, well, they call them classes. That's what I'm talking about. Just like this whole system, you can assimilate. So into. one one class is you, you got to live there full time. That's class A. Class B. You gotta be there three times a week, like three days a week, and then class C and D. And contribute money. Class C and D, you can live anywhere, but you know, it depends on like what kind of like course you're in. There's a lot of meditation, there's a school of meditation, there's this thing called the game of life. What? I don't even understand it, but I'm in, and let me say this. It's like an underground board game that, that you could die? Yeah, the <laughs> other thing is from 1983 onwards, members have assumed animal names, and not just animal names, you get an animal first name and a plant last name. So the founder is, call, is called Falcon Dandelion. And I've already picked my name. I'll give you some time to think about yours. Okay. But. Well, Falcon Dandelion. Is I'm taken. going, and just so y'all know, look out for Giraffe Kudzu. Giraffe Kudzu. You got a long neck and you grow fast. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Giraffe Kudzu I mean, in the house. Where is he at? Is he in the Hall of Mirrors? You're tall, but it's not really the no, neck. No, he's at the gong. Giraffe's my favorite animal and they're very tall. That's simple. Kudzu is a southern invasive species. I mean, with that beard of yours, it's like you don't even have a neck. 
It's not about the neck, it's about the overall height. Don't criticize my freaking name, come up with your own. Giraffe Kudzu will be with, will be gong, I, I'm coming and I want to be the gong operator. Um, That's the only stipulation. Uh, Multiple gongs. In fact, I want a hall of gongs. I'm not necessarily gonna dig it, but I will supervise the digging and I will supervise the purchasing of the gongs <laughs> and I will, attempt to construct a long stick that I will use to strike the gongs. I think I You'll can probably do to. that. You don't, you don't have find confidence. A, find a stick. I will be called um, trichinosis rosebud. Is trichinosis an animal? No, that is a, a disease that you get from raw pork. Right, but it is an animal. I mean, it's worms, I guess. I think it's the disease you get from the worm. Trichinosis worm, rosebud. Rosebud, okay. So it's like, I, I'm I'm entering into this place and T, I'm T W R B. I'm I'm twerb. I'm basically. I'm, <laughs> Can I just call you twerb? Yeah, for yeah, sure? yeah. I like that. Just call me twerb. But I want you to know that twerb. Like, could you fetch a stick for me? I'm not trying to. I'm not a dog. I'm a man. I'm a man who's. You know what? I'm I'm bring. I'm coming to you, warts and all. Okay. Trichinosis. Okay. You know, I'm not. I'm not trying to be something nice or something. I'm not. Well. What are you gonna do though? I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do. I've already decided that. Um, I'll, I'll probably dig holes. I mean. Uh, you'll be a digger. I'm gonna be a digger. I like, I mean, as a kid, man, I would love to dig a good You're hole. You're also a good cleaner. You love cleaning things. Could you clean the gongs? Well, once you dig a hole, it creates lots of debris to clean up. I don't think you have to clean a gong very often. I'm not cleaning your gongs, no. That's an emphatic no. I think you polish a gong. You like the polishing things? Uh, I've. <laughs> I've never, you know, I'm gonna answer to this truthful, truthfully and thoughtfully. You've never polished anything. I don't. I can't recall polishing anything. <sighs> the world of polishing. Just I mean, waiting I, for a twerb to show up. <laughs> when I first got that that pickup truck when I was 16, you know, I would wax it. Is waxing a form of polishing? Yes, I like, think waxing is a subgenre of polishing. And trichinosis is an animal. Yeah. Okay. You can have it your way, man. I'm a hole digger, man. I, I guess if I'm a hole digger, I should be an animal that digs holes. Okay, uh, I, I'm on board. I just can't think of one. A lot of pros here. A dog. A <laughs> uh, lot of pros here. The name uh, names one of them. Gongs. Uh, super high, high, uh, cool shit factor. You don't have to live there full time. I think you can come in at level C or D and kind of feel things out. Calling everybody an animal is some cool shit. Oh yeah. Now. There are some cons. Um, with all the pros that come from it being very cult-like, uh, there are also some cons, let's be honest. Uh, basically, the guru makes all your decisions for you. Uh, there is some estrangement from family. Oh, There's some typical cult situation things that are happening here. If you're not comfortable with that, if you, if you, if you don't like the idea of being brainwashed and manipulated, mm. Uh, which I understand some people don't, then this might not be for you. None of that came up in the tours that I saw. Like, like Fun for Louie, remember him? Uh huh. He was there with, uh, shoot, what is that gal's name who was in our cray? She was in our crayon colors music video. Remember way back in the day, she was she was a vlogger at the time, and I can't remember her name, but she, uh, Nadine, I think uh. is her name. Like they were there together, like many years ago, and like posted YouTube videos, just, and, just visiting, just visiting, and like, so like post vlogging about. I'm it. just saying, and I they think went through. They went through the chambers. You can experience the chambers and probably the gong just by visiting. Do you think that the fact that I said that, but I, they didn't mention is, any of this cult like well, shit. Well, I'm just, I'm kind of. First of all, just for legal reasons, might I say that everything I'm saying here is for entertainment purposes. <laughs> Seems like that should go at the top. <laughs> um. I'm just saying that there's been they've been accused. Let's let's just say allegedly uh, there are some there are some cult like uh, things happening here and some control issues that are happening. But like I said, I don't think you can do this properly without that. You know, and I'm not trying to. But you know, listen, people cults. You know, people they get a bad rap. <laughs> people have suffered. <laughs> what? People have su suffered incredible. Horrors and traumas from cult. So I'm not. I'm not. Pro, I'm not saying pro. I'm pro cult. I'm just saying if you're gonna do a community that's got a bunch of cool shit, there's gonna be some mind control and some manipulation. It's just kind of part of the package. 
You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Um, so just keep all that in mind. You also, if you're gonna live there full time, you're gonna be in a house with 10 to 20 people. Uh, oh. So you, this isn't gonna be an adjustment. It's gonna be adjustment, I mean, for you, you know? I, I think it would be an adjustment for me. Giraffe Kudzu is gonna have a tough time with that. But I don't know, I think I could adjust. I think I could adapt. I, I'm just gonna go back to Auroville in Indi India. Or maybe Indiana, maybe there's like a miniature version. That quickly you went back? I mean, I don't know that Oroville doesn't have some of the same, what are you afraid of at the uh, uh, you, scared, you scared me off with the, I mean, not being able to make any decisions. No, you can make decisions, but you gotta make decisions that are approved. Right. That's probably the same at Oroville, man. I'll take one gold orb and one really smooth orb within it instead of all those chambers, even though I like to dig holes. Okay. I well, think that's where I'm landing. I think I'm going to Italy, going underground, assuming that I can get these things that I've requested and, and assuming that the people are gonna still be okay with the fact that I said the stuff about mind control. Here's what I'm saying. I understand that it's part of the deal and I'm, and I'm Giraffe Kudzu is showing up, he's gonna be on the gongs, he's willing to let his mind get controlled. So I'm, I'm just saying I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna submit when I get there to my guru. Okay. Okay, so. You can just call me. Don't sue me. Tricky. If you call me Tricky, I might join you. That's better than. Tricky sounds like a carny that got fired. Short for trichinosis, man. I understand what it, what it comes from, but. Well, I've got the wreck this week. Uh, I'm gonna, so switching gears a little bit for a wreck, baby, wreck, baby, one, two, three, four. I, I'm gonna recommend a video. So. A video. Yeah, I just want you to watch a video. And this is this is more for you, but if like, you know, I, I think, I think most everybody listening um, would get a kick out of this. If you Google, well, if you search on YouTube, I've only eaten mac and cheese for the past 17 years, here's why. A video will show up called, I've only eaten mac and cheese for the past 17 years and here's why. It's on the Vice YouTube channel. I know why you're recommending it. It's almost got 10 million views. Yeah, I saw this thanks to a, a Reddit post on the Good yeah. Mythical Morning thread. Um, and <laughs> it's it's a profile piece of, you guessed it, a guy who has only eaten mac and cheese for the past 17 years, and this video tells you why. Um, he has, as we discussed on Good Mythical Morning, we, we did a whole episode about people eating only one thing, and it, you know, it did really well. This is like for many, many years ago. I barely remember even doing the episode. Right. Um, but, I did remember a little bit and I knew from the Reddit thread that like there's a connection. Well, halfway through this Vice piece as it's doing this profile thing, this is an 18 minute video. It's about five minutes in. That's when he gets into his story of after having eaten mac and cheese for a lot of his life, he's he talks about how he's watching this internet show called Good Mythical Morning and <laughs> they show a clip of us talking about people eating one thing and like we talk about how it's, there's a name for that. It's, it's a, a condition. It's a, it's a mental condition. And he did not know that he had a mental condition until he watched Good Mythical Morning and we told him. The thing that, and then he goes on and, it's like, and talks about like his treatment. It's a, it's a pretty cool video to watch. And that, that's the only time we're mentioned, but it blew my mind. And it actually, it, you know, if you were, would have reminded me that we made that episode of GMM mm -hmm. and then that someone who has that condition would have watched it and you know, I would have cringed a little bit but I hope I didn't hurt, we didn't hurt that guy's feelings. Oh, I think we helped him. But we clearly helped this guy, like we were the catalyst to get him on a path of um, coming to grips with what he's dealing with in treatment. Like there's literally, it's a little strange because it's it's a, he goes to a therapist session and it's filmed it you know it's right. they film the thing, so it's there's a strange vibe in that exchange. But maybe it was just because of the you know the fact that it was there's a therapy the session being filmed. But um, overall, I was just I was relieved to find out that we only helped the guy, and that so even though we might have gotten a kick out of people eating only one thing, it's more of a fascination than like making fun of. It's what, I think we struck a good balance. One so that we actually could help this guy, so. Changing the world one person at a time, uh, man. 
It's just it was it was surreal to watch that a couple of weeks ago. So and, and it's been out for it's been out for a while. Uh, this video came out a year ago, and yeah. then our video was like years before that. Right. Yeah. 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 So check well, that did out. Did you say the name of it? I've eaten only mac and cheese for the past seventeen years, comma. Here's why. Okay. So basically, it's the title is the. Yeah, it's the thing that I've said multiple times. Yeah, right. Vice YouTube channel. Well, thanks for listening Crazy. to us. Uh, those of you who are in any of these intentional communities uh, who joined us for this episode, thank you for joining us. Let uh, us know. We may be joining you soon. About your experience. Uh, if if we, you visited a commune yeah. or one of these places, hashtag your business. And if we got something wrong, as I'm sure we did, in the least, you know, how we pronounce some of these things, but, but some of the assumptions that I made about your establishments, l let us know, hashtag your biscuits, join the conversation, set us straight. We'll talk at you next week. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.